episode of our brand new series introducing you to Australia's professional beauty industry leaders. I am your host Kathleen Klassman and in this ongoing interview series I will be uncovering what it takes to become an industry leader by asking our guests questions relating to their chosen career path and their individual success. And in today's episode, I'm so excited to introduce you to Kai Atkinson. Now, I absolutely adore Kai and he's been in the industry for only a really short time, but what he's done so far just blows my mind and he's so inspiring to me. So he's a corneotherapist working in Tasmania at Mary Skincare and he helps a whole heap of different clients with skin conditions. And what I love the most about Kai in this short time in the industry, he has just gained an abundance of knowledge and he's really dedicated his, his time to education. And he not only takes this education on board, but he's so willing to share it with everybody as well. So in his spare time, he runs his blog called Strictly Skin by Kai. And if you haven't heard of it already, absolutely go search it. We'll leave links to it at the bottom of this um, at the bottom of this talk. And um, you've definitely got to check him out. So without further ado, let's bring Kai on and we'll start this interview. And by the way, everybody who's watching, please, if you hear any kind of audio issues throughout the broadcast, please let us know and we'll do our best. All righty, we're bringing Kai on. Hello, Kai. Hello, Kat. Thank you so much for having me here this evening. You're so welcome. Thank you so much for being here and taking the time out of your day. I really, really appreciate it. Of course. Awesome. So let's just, just jump into it. I've got so many questions to ask and I just really want to learn all of this um, inside <laughs> goss about how you became to be the person you are today. So Kai, the first thing, a nice fun question. What is your number one favourite thing about the beauty industry? My number one favourite thing about the beauty industry would have to be the skin side of things. I truly love nothing more than linking a skin type to a skin condition, then linking it to skin structure and function, to the cells and systems affected, to then product composition, to then home care protocols, and then in clinic treatment modalities for the client. It truly is amazing when you get to see a client's skin change from a debilitating skin condition such as acne, and myself personally, know what that's like. So that is essentially why I became a therapist and why I um, love being in the industry. So that would have to be my number one thing. I do love to perform skin consultations. They are a must and they are very um, important to me. And I do enjoy facial treatments as well and collagen induction therapy treatments too. So yes, that is my, that is my forte at this point in time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, Kai. And I just really love that you brought that up because it's probably my most favorite thing about the way you articulate yourself in the industry and your blog. You know, you really do, just like you said, you relate um, skin conditions to the structure and function of the skin cells and system. And, you know, it's taking your knowledge and really implementing it in such a thoughtful and meaningful way. So, I love, love that. Thank you. Oh, thank you for sharing. It's good fun <laughs> once you get the hang of it. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. absolutely. <laughs> and you said that you had your own personal experience when it comes to skin. Yeah, um, if you don't mind sharing, we have a little bit of time tonight. We'd be able yes, to talk to us about your, um, your skincare history and how you were affected. Absolutely. So essentially it all began when I was 18. And yeah. I developed grade three acne. Oh, yeah. Yes, it was very hard on me. My forehead was covered in interfollicular compaction, okay? My cheeks were covered in pustules, papules, and nodules. So at the time, I was actually a ballroom dancer. So I'm in a very competitive, glamorous sport with skin like Freddy Krueger. So it was very traumatizing for me because mm. I had always had clear skin. Mm. It's like I had this androgen surge very late because 
while everyone else at school had acne, I didn't. So it was really a challenge to overcome, but I did overcome it. <laughs> it yes. took time and perseverance and an understanding of the leading causes, but I made it happen. So what happened was I did actually um, end up having to wear stage makeup yeah. for ballroom dancing competitions. Now, it makes me cringe today because of the ingredients that are within yeah. horrible makeup formulations these days. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the product that I was using contained emulsifiers, they contained fragrances, and they contained pro-inflammatory free fatty acids. So if we go back to the science of the skin and we discuss QT bacterium acnes, well, that bacteria is designed to convert the triglyceride molecule within the sebaceous gland cell into free fatty acids. Now, this takes place just within the interfollicular opening of the pilosebaceous duct to create the acidic um, acid mantle that yeah. sits around 5.5. So mm. by applying pro-inflammatory free fatty acids to my skin was literally food for QT bacterium acnes to proliferate. Yeah. So what was grade three <laughs> acne nearly progressed into grade four. Uh -huh. So unfortunately, I did have to go on to Roaccutane. Yeah. Now, I am not against Roaccutane at all mm. because it is someone's personal choice. And at the time, mm. I did not have enough knowledge to make a truly informed decision, if that makes sense. So yeah. had I have known to have maybe sought out a nutritionist or a naturopath, I probably would have gone down that path first before going down the Roaccutane pathway. Because as we know, Kat, Roaccutane act, acts on the sebaceous gland cell. Yeah. It acts on the SIBO site. In particular, it acts on the uh, uh, peroxisome proliferated activated receptors. So those receptors are designed to tightly regulate sebum production. Mm. So by cutting that off completely, you have no acid mantle, which is your first line of skin barrier defense. Yeah, okay? that's right. Without the acid mantle, there is no multilamellar lipid structure or bilayers, yeah. okay? So in turn, you have high trans epidermal water loss and essentially you have invading microorganisms penetrating in. So my skin cat was an absolute <laughs> mess. I remember yeah. sitting, I was in uh, retail at the time and I was eating a sandwich and I literally developed angular shellitis because I could not eat. Yeah, it's so painful. I could not eat. It was shocking. And my skin would be flaking off at work and, you know, I pride myself on looking a certain way because I've come from being a ballroom dancer. So it was very uh, hard to, you know, look at myself in the mirror every day. But I do remember specifically my mum saying, you developed this skin condition for a reason. And I said, no, I didn't. <laughs> That's crazy. I did not develop this at all for any reason. But yep. if there's one thing I have learned, it is to listen to your mother because... <laughs> It led me down this path to become a skin treatment therapist specializing in corneotherapy. Yes. So I was very fortunate to find a clinic in my hometown that stocked a particular product that had a direct affinity with the skin, okay? So while I was on Roaccutane, this skincare product was giving back to my skin what I desperately had taken away. Does that make sense? Yeah. So. Yes, it was a blessing in a way because I found this product that I now prescribe to my clients. I've been using it now for probably five years. I'd drink it if I could. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention just her first name just for privacy reasons. Her name's Lily and I will forever be in debt to her because Lily was someone that just really took the time to, fix my skin. Oh, it's getting getting emotional. <laughs> so yeah, and she did. And we're good friends today. And it's really good to catch up with her when we do network together in the industry. So when we do catch up for symposiums or, or training, um, it's great. And so from there, it really stemmed on to finding a school 
um, that a beauty therapy school that mm. complied with corneal therapy for me. Okay, so I chose that path because that path made sense. It repaired my skin. So therefore, why would I choose anything else? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I teamed up with Beverly Greenwood. Yes. And Bev Greenwood, as you would know, is a skin guru. Yeah. Honestly, she truly, truly is. I love her to death. We are still great friends to this day, despite um, not really having seen her for two years now, really. Um, but we are very close to this day. And she was tremendous. She provided me with so much skin knowledge that she didn't need to, because again, the curriculum only lasted 12 months, but she did what she could. And she gave us folders upon folders of skin anatomy and physiology, you name it. It was um, brilliant. So I do treasure those. Um, and I do tend to go over them quite regularly as well, because it's uh, very important information. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's how I sort of became a beauty therapist. Um, but I really don't, I don't have anything against beauty therapists. I absolutely love them, but I just don't find that that term resonates with me because yeah. I don't like performing eyebrow treatments. I don't like performing any type of waxing. I don't like performing, you know, makeup application on people. Nothing against it. I love getting my eyebrows waxed. I'm, I'm actually about to <laughs> undergo henna brow lamination. I think that's what it's called, a brow lamination yes. um, in December. Oh. So, yes, just oh. before I go home for Christmas. So I'm very <laughs> excited. Um, <Yes>. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kai. Yes. And I like there's so many things to comment on here, but I love what you said right at the end there regarding beauty therapy. And that's one of the most beautiful things. Like we can be whoever we want to be in the beauty industry. Mm. You don't have to be a jack of all trades. You can really specialize. And what I'm hearing so strongly from you is there's a big connection with your, uh, your skin, um, your skin experience and going through grade three acne and that really inspiring you to become a corneotherapist, a skin yeah. treatment therapist. So yeah. thank you so much for sharing that. And I just want to um, quickly mention right now to anyone who's watching, um, hello to everyone who said hello. And um, if you do have questions, pop them in the comment section. If we have time at the end, we'll answer them. Um, but yeah, we love hearing from you. Beautiful. So let's get into the second question, Kai. And I believe you've answered little bits and pieces of it, but there's definitely some good pits to pop in here. So tell us about how you came became to be a corneotherapist, a skin treatment therapist, beauty therapist. Sure. And um, yeah, how did you become that? Well, for me, finding Bev Greenwood was a blessing because she preached corneotherapy. So for those who don't know, corneotherapy is a progressive and remedial skin treatment methodology that focuses on the restoration, preservation and maintenance of the stratum corneum and the skin's barrier defence systems. So it's an outside in approach that repairs the skin but preserves the integrity of the epidermis at all times. So we do no harm to the skin and if you can, use products that have a direct affinity to the structure and function of the first three lines of defence, if that makes sense. So essentially, we don't believe in ingredients that contain fragrances, emulsifiers, preservatives, parabens, silicones, carcinogens, or colours or dyes that are irritants. Um, we try to avoid that and keep it as clean as possible for our integumentary system, because it is there to protect you in the end. Without skin, we die. So... Yeah, feed it what it requires to lunch on a daily basis. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Bev, so Bev basically was the person who introduced you to corneotherapy. And I mean, what an incredible experience being introduced to corneotherapy. To really understand it. Yeah. I mean, it did start yeah. with Lily, but again, as a client, you don't you don't have that knowledge. So yeah. to understudy a corneotherapist, um, is how I got into the industry. And then of course I progressed onto working in different clinics. So I was very fortunate when I moved to Melbourne, I had the um, privilege to actually work within a naturopathic clinic. I was there for mm -hmm. about six months and it was just so amazing. It truly, truly was, um, but it did take its toll on me. I found that it just wasn't the right time 
if mm. that makes sense. So I had to move on and focus more on my studies, but then I found another clinic that stocked the same product because I'm not going anywhere, <laughs> sticking <laughs> with this product. Um, and, I, and I essentially did clinical assistant work. So that's what I was doing from the beginning. Yeah. Um, because again, you had to make money while you, because I literally moved from Wagga to Melbourne. You know, I didn't even know how to cook. So <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's true. Yeah. Um, so I really do all that. I, I look back and I think, wow. <laughs> I I did it all for skin and it's paid off. So <laughs> yes. yeah. And yeah. Um, then I found another clinic and it was great. But look, I'm going to be honest, it just did not resonate with me at all, nor them. And um, sometimes that happens. One door closes, mm. another opens. And then finally, I found common <laughs> ground in the land of Tasmania with Mary and Mary is a very dear friend of mine. I would have to say she's probably one of my best friends and I know she's probably tuning in tonight. Um, but she really <laughs> did believe in me from the very beginning. She, I remember her saying to me, I remember you at this training and you said something and you turned around and I've gone, who the hell is this kid? And I have no idea what I said, but apparently <laughs> it made an impact on her. And um, we, I've known her for a good two years now. So for her to say, hey, buddy, I'm actually really desperate down here. I'm too big for my shoes. I really need you to jump on board and become a part of Mary's skincare. And so I said, sure. So I got on a plane. I'd never really been to Tasmania. My dad actually does live here, but um, I don't live with him. But our relationship has definitely improved being down here. But um, awesome. I did it on a whim and it's paid off big time. Yes. So thank you, Mary. <laughs> Yes. Oh, we love Mary. And yeah. I absolutely, I've got to get Mary on here and interview her. But wow, Kai, that's just incredible. I love that you really, since starting your study, you really did, you really have dedicated yourself to skin. Yeah. And I love that you've, you've put yourself in these challenging positions and moving to Melbourne and moving to um, Tasmania. It's incredible. And yeah. I love that um, you're really happy in your role now. So Yes, I am. and we are expanding as well, which is great. So we're actually learning Ooh. Skina therapy. Now, Mary can explain this better than I can because she's really developed a massive passion for this and I'm so excited by her passion with it. So Skina therapy stands for Self-Controlled Energy Neuroadaptive Regulator. So it's very similar to a TENS machine and it's designed to help those with chronic or acute pain. So when applied to the skin, it sends electrical signals through the skin to the nerves, to the brain, which then gets the brain to produce its own neuropeptides and endorphins for the body to essentially heal itself. It's pretty remarkable. We have actually mm -hmm. been treating clients with uh, peripheral neuropathy. So yeah. this was a side effect from cancer that one of our clients yeah. did have. And he can now feel um, when he's counting money, he can feel the, the coins. And he's never had this. He can feel himself going downstairs. He could not feel that before. He just felt like he was sort of floating. So it truly yeah. is an amazing treatment modality that we, we can't do any harm. And I believe the only contraindications is you can't have a pacemaker, you can't have an infectious skin disease, and you can't obviously perform it on people who are pregnant. Um, and the other one is um, you can't be an epileptic. Oh, finally it came to me. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Mary can explain it better than I can, but um, it is a new treatment that we are bringing into the clinic. And I have to say it's taken off the reviews that Mary is getting and um, the, uh, the feedback. It's just uh, phenomenal. That's amazing. Mm. And I really want to stop and comment here and share with everybody um, how what an incredible opportunity we have as beauty therapists um, and skin therapists and just working so closely with clients um, because we can really like a treatment modality like that that's life changing you know helping someone with their acne mm. that's that's life changing um just we have such an incredible opportunity so thank you for sharing that i'm really excited for you both that's yeah, so cool. I'm going to have to do some research. I've never heard of this modality. and No, and nobody has. I had never heard of it. So it's it's yeah. it's Russian technology. So it's very similar, mm. as I said, to a TENS machine. So just do some research. And what we do is mm. we get clients to um, 
do their own research so they can make yeah. an informed decision if this is right yeah. for them because if it's not and you don't go in with an open mind, you're not going to get mm. the results. No way. Yeah. Well, that's um, it. Yeah, you're just kind of blocking it mentally. You're right. Definitely. Well, let's jump on to the third question tonight. And this is for the audience watching. And it really is, what words of advice do you have to offer the audience and other beauty therapists if they were considering to really follow down the same chosen career path? To have perseverance and to not, yeah, not give up would be, would be my advice, truly. Um, mm. I remember I cried twice. <laughs> <laughs> and they were horrendous <laughs> demon roaring cries, but you really need, I really needed to do that to, to continue yeah. on um, and to not knock back any opportunity, despite if it's going to turn out or not, just walk through the door, have the courage and just walk through that door. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. At least you've gained some experience, you know what you want, and then you'll find and things will gravitate towards you. So mm -hmm. that would be, yeah. I would say have perseverance and to have courage and to just believe in yourself. Believe and achieve is uh, what I have been told to do on a daily basis. So, yeah. Is that Mary's words coming? That is me? Mary's words of advice. Yeah, I did. Because have you read, you've, you've read my introduction on my website, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, so I made a point to write that in there so that when I go back over it, I go, yeah, believe and achieve, Kai. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. absolutely. And that's a really beautiful practical advice um, for the beauty therapist but I'd love yeah. to I'd love for you to share um, in particular to do with corneotherapy because I know a lot of those who are watching might not have even heard of the term corneotherapy I know for myself I hadn't um, really delved into it until recently with my skin clinic so yeah I'd love for you to explain to everybody what is corneotherapy and how can you become a corneotherapist or at least find some information sure. about it Sure. Well, as I said before, corneotherapy is essentially a skin treatment methodology. Okay. Yeah. So it's working on repairing the first three lines of skin barrier defense. So your acid mantle and microbiome, your stratum corneum, and your multilamellar lipid structure. I know that's a big word, but unfortunately, <laughs> we can't really say bilayers anymore because that's actually old terminology that we need to yeah. get out of our vocabulary. So that's what corneotherapy is in simple terms using products that have a direct affinity to the skin that don't disturb skin barrier function, that, um, yeah, well, that's essentially what I would explain corneotherapy. Um, but corneotherapy is directly linked to corneobiology. Yes. And corneobiology is essentially um, the uh, physiological, biochemical and uh, chemical uh, compositions of the stratum corneum. Mm. And the barrier functions within the stratum corneum, I believe there are around 16 barrier functions located within the stratum corneum. Mm. So it's more than just static tissue. And yeah. you get to learn that diving into research papers and things. And this is all available from corneotherapy.org and from um, many uh, peer reviews. If you just type up corneotherapy or the stratum corneum is alive, there is research to back that up. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's you're right. And it is, it's a methodology and it's not just, it's not a marketing term. It's not. No. Yeah. It's a it's, way of treating the skin. It's yeah. a principle. Okay. Yeah. If you're a cornea therapist and you're doing, you know, certain treatment modalities that ablate the epidermis, well then unfortunately you're not a cornea therapist. So yeah. there's a, there's a fine balance. Look, I know, look, I, me personally, I won't perform microdermabrasion treatments only because the research is out there that it does actually flatten the reti pegs. And of course, if you flatten the reti pegs, you're going to have a very flat face. So if you impair that dermal epidermal junction, the nutrients aren't going to get to where they need to, to nourish the living cells of the epidermis. Um, you can over time develop wrinkles um, because that junction does become impaired. But again, each skin is going to respond differently. Okay, yeah, you're gonna get collagen yeah. production because you're creating inflammation, um, but it's not as controlled as collagen induction therapy is. But even in saying that, not all CRT um, uh, machines out there are the same. So yeah. there is a fine line. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think we all have to, we all resonate with our own, mm. oh, we all resonate with different parts of the industry and 
for me as well, I really love corneotherapy mm. because it always comes back to the science and peer-reviewed journal articles and it's really, yeah, it's life-changing for a lot of mm. our clients. So thank you for sharing that, Kai. Of course. And um, there was something else on that. But, yeah, no, that's, that's really helpful. And I guess for anybody who's watching who is a beauty therapist and they're thinking, you know, this sounds like, the methodology I've been looking for. This is the information I've been missing. I know that's how I felt when I found it. Um, what would you suggest to them? What would be the best place to go for them? Of course. So I would suggest uh, jumping onto uh, corneotherapy.org. So that is the website to research and um, get an understanding of what is corneotherapy, what is a corneotherapist, yeah. um, and go from there. But I forgot to answer your question before. To become a corneotherapist, yes. you, you essentially need to find a clinic. And I don't really want to mention products, but a clinic that does practice this treatment methodology. Yeah. So, right. yeah, because as I said, we are skin treatment therapists, yeah. but corneotherapy is a principle that we follow, okay, which makes us corneotherapists. That's right. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure we can pop some links below um, to everything that we talk about a little bit later. Um, but on to question number four, and I know beauty therapists are just so excited to hear that your answers and anyone's answers for a matter of fact. I know for myself, when I started out in the industry, I was, oh, I needed to find these educational resources. So I'd love to ask you, what are your top three educational resources that you frequently access or if you found valuable throughout your career you can talk about books websites apps hey perhaps even educational institutions whatever you want to mention Kai absolutely so I took the privilege just to write this website down because even though I know the name of it sometimes the domain is a bit different so yeah. I obtain most of my knowledge from pastiche training so that is www.pastiche p-a-s-t-i-c-h-e hyphen training.com okay now Florence Barrett Hill is the uh, creator of pastiche training and she is the David Attenborough of skin she really yeah. is and I'm very privileged to have worked with her um, and continue to work with her and I'm in awe of her brain I really am if I don't <laughs> understand something she doesn't keep it to herself you know the pastiche mantra is to learn educate share and that's yeah. what it is. And that's what I believe in doing for people because I didn't do um, chemistry in school. I didn't do biology. I didn't do anything like that. So I know what it's like to be the, the person that feels very insecure and I'm not smart enough because I've been through that. And I have to say that, you know, it's all in your mind. If you find your passion, you will make it happen and it will just gravitate yeah. towards you. You know what I mean? I don't have an interest in eyebrows. I can't stand doing them. I can't stand them. But I love skin. I love looking at skin. I love thinking about the cells and systems affected with a skin condition. It just gets me going. But um, each to their own. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of beauty therapists are going to be jumping on there. And I know for myself, I found it really valuable. Even just the free uh, blog articles that she has. This mm. So much um, on her website. Absolutely. And you, you have two more resources. Yes, so the other up. one would be, as I said before, <laughs> corneotherapy.org. Yes. And the other one is the NCBI. So that is the National Centre for Biotechnology um, Information. So these are peer reviewed articles on things as well. So Google Scholar is also very uh, mm -hmm. great. Um, but apart from that, that's what I really go to. Otherwise, I just ask my mentors, I ask Bev, I ask Flo, I ask so many others in the industry. I think having a great networking um, uh, group is important. And I think Danielle Hughes in her last interview said this as yes. well. She said that um, it's important to actually connect with the right people in order to learn and grow. So network with the right people, ask questions, ask mm -hmm. a lot of questions and don't believe everything you hear. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, Kai. And mm. you're right, that there's just so much power to just networking and chatting with people. I mean, that's how we met. I mean, I don't even know how we got in contact to begin with. But, you know, I guess... I think, I think we just, um, we got in contact, I think, 
from the product that we stock and it was on their private group and it yes. was just asking lots of questions and that's um, right yep i answered the majority of them I think. <laughs> and then that's how we just got um chatting and that's right you know to, to get to see you this year was um amazing because you know i mean i was very fortunate at the start of the year to experience a facial treatment with you Yes. So you can oh. tell everybody what my skin's like. You can, you can vouch for me. <laughs> <laughs> it is just pristine, just Thank as you. glowing as it looks as it does on the camera now. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. It was a pleasure, Kai. And it's just, it really goes to show that it's all about networking and asking questions. Mm. That's how I got to meet you. I was just asking a whole heap mm. of questions. And I had and no. Idea. I don't know an answer. Look. I will simply just say, look, I don't know the answer. I'll get back to you. I don't know everything. Yeah. God, I'm still right. learning and I'll forever be learning. And it's exhausting thinking about it, but it's also exciting <laughs> because in our industry, we have the ability to never stop learning. Yes. You know, we can continue on. Like for me personally, I would love to be an educator one day. Yes. I really would. Yes. I see myself, are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I do see myself as a skin treatment therapist, but I would, like to branch out in the future as an educator you know so we'll see where that goes yes and that's the beauty of this industry we we have so many options and we can lead you down so mm. many different paths so yeah i hope that the viewers watching are really um feeling inspired to look into peer-reviewed journal articles mm. and really um yeah start looking at scientific literature although we're not trained in how to read scientific literature you can you kind of can learn the ropes as you dive yeah. into these articles yeah. and there's a few principles to follow and perhaps maybe i'll even make a video i'll have to get you one kai and get your <laughs> tips <laughs> but, thank you i mean just because we're um beauty therapists doesn't mean we're not exempt from going the extra mile to really find good credible information so thank you for sharing that kai and sure. i have another fun question mm. a thought-provoking one and i asked this i'll be asking this in all my interviews but do you have any predictions about the future of beauty therapy and how it might look in the next 10 to 20 years look danielle hughes did make a very important note on this in her last video and i have actually spoken to her in person about this as well that those who do obtain a diploma mm. in beauty therapy may need a degree to perform certain treatments like collagen induction therapy or laser or IPL treatments. Yeah. Because again, we need to make sure that we are covered and that the client is you know, safe. So that would be the thing that I see myself potentially doing. I would love to obtain a degree in, um, in dermal therapy. I think that is something that will take effect in the near future. Maybe in the middle of next year, end of next year, I'm not entirely sure because there's so much I want to do. I want to understudy uh, Fiona Tuck. So she's a nutritionist. Um, so that's something I want to do. Again, learning skin art therapy. So there's so much that's yeah. out there. And look, I'm like a sponge. I'll just try anything. I'll absorb anything. If it doesn't work, I get rid of it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's such an important point to really address. And that's why we really need to focus on our education and be mm. at the top of our game and be industry leaders because, mm. you know, like Danielle said, um, one thing could go wrong and the government mm. decides, you know what, we can't let these beauty therapists do this yes. anymore because yeah. we're affecting such, we're mm. affecting an organ, a large organ yeah. if you're working absolutely and it does scare me sometimes when i hear what kind of depth a, a therapist has gone on a client like mm. to be honest the skin the, the entire integumentary system is around i believe it's six millimeters um sorry did i say that right <laughs> you're a six millimeters six millimeters yeah. i'm really dead now you're a print six <laughs> thank you god thank god you're on the ball with that one. But um, when I hear that they're going like, you know, three millimetres, it's like, uh, really? Okay. Yeah. There's no fibroblast down there. Yeah, it's just fatty adipose tissue and yeah, literally. muscle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, it is a little bit scary. Um, but all we can do is really encourage each other to just be, yeah, the best we can be and mm. share the information and not hold it within. And that's what 
this is all about is sharing information. So, yeah, that's, um, it sounds like you really do, you agree with Danielle's predictions, but did you have any other little thoughts or predictions about the industry or corneotherapy perhaps or anything at all? It's a bit hard to say because, you know, yeah. two, two years in the industry, I'm still only a baby. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't, I think that Daniel made a very important point on that yeah. and it definitely stirred something up within me. You know what's funny? I actually have to get that book because I think I have to get that book that tells you exactly how deep the skin is. It's doing my head in. This is me being a perfectionist. I'll be right back. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So Kai's off to grab a book he needs to confirm. <laughs> and this is one of the things I really, really love about Kai, his dedication to just further education. And here we go. Someone has just commented below saying it's 1.5 millimetres to 2 millimetres dermis and 3 to 6 millimetres to the adipose Sorry. tissue. Yes, I was right, six <laughs> millimetres. So I didn't need to doubt yeah. myself. <laughs> Thank you. I'm yes, simply yes. going, I'm not sure. I'm thinking, hang on, no, because when we do like, you know, um, home rolling at home, that's 0 0.3 millimetres that we yeah. would prescribe. So yeah, I was right. Sometimes you just need to not, you know, just, you know your stuff sometimes. <laughs> yes, I yeah. love it. Thank you. We had a lovely user. Um, yes, exactly. Depending on the age of the client, also the site of the skin as well. So 100%, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, definitely. So, yeah, and for our last question tonight, before we share all your details about how um, the viewers can view your, um, your content and look at your blog, I'd love for you to share if you could go back in time and give your younger self a piece of life advice what would it be now given you are still really young <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you've got a lot of life and learning to come but what sure. would you tell younger Kai that everything is going to be okay that's what I would say <laughs> everything is going to be okay because yeah. there was a time where I had no idea what I wanted to do and um I was actually stuck in a rut and you know, to be honest, I was actually told by someone that I was working with at the time, and this was in retail, oh, you're not going to figure out what you want to do ever because, you know, you're just not. And I thought, I'm going to show you, and I did. Yes. <laughs> yes. I did. I found my passion, and unfortunately it did come with developing acne, but in saying that, it is a blessing, and I try not to look at it like a negative. So yeah. when I get a pustule or I get papule here and there, it's like, you know what? He did me a favour. So <laughs> it's all good. That's right. Yeah. yeah, I love I love your passion. It just oh, it's just here and you are doing what your life's work and what you're meant to be here to be doing. So absolutely love everything that you've shared tonight, Kai. And I just out of interest, did you ever take photos of your skin when you I had this did, I did, I yeah. did, um, and so did, well, my therapist back in Wagga, because I go and see her every time I go home. Lily. And, yes, I do yeah. love her to death. I've actually booked in just before Christmas, so, oh. <laughs> yeah, need a facial. Um, so, yes, I, um, what was the question? Sorry, I digressed. Oh, that's okay. Was there any photos taken? Any of photos, you? yes. Yeah. So she's got them. She's got them on her um, her observe and on her camera, but awesome. I deleted them. I deleted them because Fair. I didn't, and a lot of clients do this. You know, I said, yeah. do you have pictures of your skin prior to starting with me or, mm. you know, like when this really started? And they go, no, I deleted them. And I understand. I do. Yeah. So I can relate. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's fair enough. Oh, but, yes, when I have when I have seen the, the photos, I go, <laughs> yeah fire engine like it's crazy so yeah because I mean it, yeah like honestly it's come such a long way <laughs> I'm embracing it because it's it's been a journey <laughs> yes absolutely and it just it just goes to show you've really put that effort in not only as a client but as becoming a therapist and really embracing so thank you so, so much for sharing everything, Kai. We have loved having you on here and you taking your time out. It's, That's okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Again, this was my first live. So <laughs> I, hope it, I hope it's gone okay. 
Yes. Yeah. Well, you've got to break the barrier. You've got to jump on live. And I mean, it can be a bit daunting and yeah. look, I'm not perfect, but we're doing it for the greater good. We're here, yeah. we're sharing all the information yeah. and it's, it's brilliant. So before we stop this interview, let's check the comments and see what yeah. we've got here. I know we've got a lot of, a lot of comments. This is awesome. And for some reason on the streaming software that we're using here, it doesn't always say who has posted, but we've got, I'm going to start reading them out. We've got a Facebook user saying, yes, um, Bev Greenwood, you're such a gem. Yes, I hate that term too. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's about. <laughs> oh, Kai, this is so sad to hear, but I'm very glad everything worked out for you now, helping people like yourself with their self-esteem. That's oh, really that's sweet. sweet isn't it hello gorgeous people yep oh uh, we, our first question awesome mm -hmm. and i'm going to hand this one over to you kai mm -hmm. and it doesn't say who's asked the question but they're wanting you or my you know what we're going to hand this to you to sure. explain the acne grades okay sure all right let me get my thinking cap on so <laughs> acne grade one is essentially interfollicular compaction so poor corneocyte compaction faulty desquamation, there will be open and closed comedones, okay? Yep. But no inflammation. So that's acne grade one. And that's yep. probably the best grade of acne to have, to be honest. I know it's a bit annoying, but yep. um, if one does pick and create inflammation, it mm -hmm. then can progress onto grade two. And grade two essentially is pustules um, and potentially some uh, papules may be present, but majority of it's gonna be interfollicular compaction and some pustules, okay? Acne grade three, which is what I had, was essentially all three of those things plus nodules. So yep. yes, it really attacked my cheeks. I was very fortunate to mm. not um, have any on my neck, to not have any on my back or decolletage, Nothing like that. So in a way, I was blessed to not have it on my forehead, but it attacked here. But I've had a lot of skin needling treatments and using a lot of antioxidants on my skin to bring it back to life and to repair the fascia septa scarring because that's what I was left with. The sebaceous gland fascia septa, because I had squeezed and all of that, was scarred. And of course, my melanocytes were on overdrive producing yeah. pigmentation. So I had a lot of post-inflammatory pigmentation, but pretty much now it's all gone and it's just maintenance now. And um, yeah. grade three can progress on to grade four and mine potentially could have. And grade four is cystic acne. Okay. Yeah. And then from what I have learned, there is five and six, which is acne conglobata. Mm -hmm. which essentially is, um, oh, look, it's so, it's just, if you Google acne conglobata, you'll see what I'm saying. And then grade six is acne fulminans, which is an ulcerated form of acne. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? If you actually mm -hmm. Google that, it is so horrendous. It is so emotional. Yeah. I couldn't, I don't, I don't know if I could have survived having acne fulminans. So, you know, people really, yeah, it's, it's amazing what we take for granted. So, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying those, Kai. I think it's That's really okay. important for I us to know that. Too, that even as a corneotherapist, treating acne grade three is not easy. Yeah. It's not it's not right. and essentially if you're not going to get the results with acne grade three with topical skincare you need to take internal intervention 100 yeah. percent um, if not prior to and you also need to work in synergy with a dermatologist now this can be challenging because there are dermatologists out there who don't update their knowledge who believe you know oh just use this cleanser and it's going to you know, kill off the bacteria, but it's actually damaging the first three lines of barrier defence. Yeah. So you have a knock-on effect and you don't get the results. And, in fact, a, a friend of mine just messaged me tonight saying that a friend of his is really struggling with acne and uh, that she is needing to reach out to me because she's having no luck with dermatologists. So, yeah. 
Yeah, and we hear this story over and over again. And I mean, it's not dermatology as a profession. I mean, they're very highly trained doctors. Mm. Within oh, the field of skin. They have so they, much value yeah. to add. It's 100%. just, like you said, not all of them are updating their knowledge or perhaps they don't even yeah. specialise in acne. And, yeah. you know, an acne client for them is just kind of like, oh, like it's just another it's just a, a bleak condition and maybe they're really interested in skin cancers, for example. So, Oh, absolutely. Oh, it, and that's what I send them off for, like the clients, yeah. you know, get this checked out, you know. Yeah, that's what they're there <laughs> for. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we must work with allied health professionals. It's such a 100%. good point. 100%. Yeah, it's really important. So I'm having a look through here. We've got lots of love you, Kai. What an amazing story to start off with, Kai. <laughs> Oh, they're so sweet. It's so beautiful. And, oh, and, yep, we'll definitely share the training place, so pastiche. Um, yes, pastiche training, uh, dot com. So if you type up pastiche training on Google or type up Florence Barrett Hill, you will find it. That's right. Awesome. And just seeing if there's any more questions. We've got lots of beautiful comments. Oh, that's so amazing. I'm losing light, Kat. I'm so sorry. You, oh, that's all right. We're going to finish up now. But uh, can a corneotherapist treat grade five or six acne? Interesting. Look, they know can. About they can, <laughs> but they need to work with a dermatologist. Yeah. They need to. They may require, even I did on grade three, mm. systemic intervention. So they would need yeah. to see a naturopath, but they would need to potentially be taking some pretty aggressive medications to treat that because, oh, look, it's so distressing yeah. even thinking about it. Um, yeah. But you've got to be there emotionally for that client, you know. Yeah. And if they leave you, they leave you. You can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And at the end of the day, you know, it's their choice if they want to commit. But um, being there for them emotionally and educating them on what their skin does require, doing your best to explain why their skin is presenting the way it is, um, and definitely, definitely working with someone who is highly trained, who has, you know, all of those um, medical certifications behind them because, yeah, I, I yeah. would be like, I'm sorry, we've got to get you to a dermatologist. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What an important point. And yeah. I think on that amazing amazing point let's just end this here on a high note thank you so much to everyone for being here and before you go yeah i'd like to say thank you for being here with kai and myself by watching and tuning into videos like this it really proves that you have what it takes to be an industry leader so beauty therapists stay on top of your game keep educating yourself networking amongst each other and don't forget the reason why you became a beauty therapist in the first place Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kat, for having me. You're so welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>